Hallelujah. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Praise God. I like that song we sang, the first song, There Is No Other Name. There is no other name, amen? In the presence of God, it's all about His presence. All about who He is. Tonight I want to dedicate this service and to be dub it as a night of thanks. A night of thanks. The word thanks means an attitude of appreciation. Usually it's for something that, uh, that somebody has done that maybe we didn't even ask for. Amen? Uh, something that they didn't have to do, but they did it. How many know is we could, we could use a little of that in our nation today? Amen? An attitude of appreciation, usually for something someone did, but didn't have to do. It's a benefit. It's a favor. Amen? So tonight I want to call it a night of thanks, just giving thanks to God for everything. We all have a lot to give God thanks for here tonight. Amen? We have thanks we can worship God in freedom and liberty here in America. Amen? We can come and gather here in the church. Amen? I've been to countries where you're not allowed to have a church like this. I've been to, I was to Cuba back in 2002. They're not allowed to build any new buildings. Not allowed to have anything like that. We can come here. We can build as much as we want. Amen? We can make it as big. We can have great pastors, amen, like your pastors, amen. Are you thankful for awesome pastors tonight? I'm thankful the Lord has led me to them and led me to this church. I'm just so thankful for everything, as I know you are. We just want to talk about tonight being a night of thanks, amen. Uh, Psalms 140, verse 13, just simply says this, Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. I like that first word he put in there, surely. <laughs> Not surely, but surely. Surely. Somebody say, surely. surely. Say it with conviction. Surely. surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. Surely, Lord, we can give thanks unto you tonight for what you did for us on the cross of Calvary. Surely we can thank Him tonight for the awesome gift of salvation. Surely we can thank Him for what He did and what He went through. Took those stripes on His back and we can thank Him for, for all of these things. Amen? We thank the Lord. We, we know this is Thanksgiving, a time of when the, uh, we was getting, uh, America was getting freedom for the religious uh, liberties. Amen? Coming over here. And, and we just want to thank God for all of that. Amen? all that Christ has done for you, all that Christ has done for us, and we ought to continually give him thanks for all that he is and all that he's doing. Amen? Surely the righteous, is there anyone righteous in here tonight? Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. Amen? That's where I want to stay. And I often think about giving God thanks. Everybody think about that often? We ought to think about it quite often. Lord, we just thank you for everything every day. Thank you for where you brought us from. I don't have a testimony like some folks. But I can thank God tonight that I was brought up in a Christian home. I thank God that he preserved me from a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm sure if I wasn't brought up in a Christian home, I might not be here tonight. I might be dead. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or I'm, I might have killed somebody else and tried trying. <laughs> Praise the Lord, somebody. And of course, you never wanted to kill anybody, did you? <laughs> anyway, maybe God, God's preserved us from a lot of stuff. Amen. I thank God for the Christian home I was brought up in. I thank God for the faith that was instilled in my life as a young child and growing up and seeing that faith and having parents that, that believed in God. Amen. And if you do have a testimony... A rap sheet, praise the Lord. You know what? You ought to thank God that God brought you out of the miry clay and set your feet on a rock to stay tonight. Amen, somebody. Because you don't, have, you don't have to be here, but God brought you here. Amen. 
We've got to remember those scriptures. You didn't choose God. It says he chose you. Aren't you glad he chose you tonight and ordained you and brought you in to his kingdom tonight? I'm thankful that he kept me from a lot of things. I often see, hear that song. We used to sing that song quite a bit in church. That hymn, count your blessings, name them one by one. I was thinking about that one day, and the Lord said, you'll never be able to count all the blessings. So you don't know how many times I kept all those animals off the road. Kept them in the ditch when they could have ran out on the road. Amen. I was just driving from, I just drove about 10 miles the other day, and there's four or five deer laying in the ditch. Somebody hit them. You know, as many miles as we've traveled, we never hit, hit any deer or any animals like that. Praise God. I say, thank you, Lord. We pray every time before we leave this, this uh, I call it the dooryard. Remember, we leave, before we leave the parking lot, before we leave any parking lot, the first thing we do is say, thank you, Lord. We thank you for a safe trip. Amen. We thank you for safety. We thank you that the angels are going before us. Amen. That you're going to guide us and protect us and keep us from all incidents. Amen, somebody. Keep us out of accidents. Praise the Lord, somebody. I found in the Bible where even God gave thanks a couple times. Jesus gave thanks. In Matthew 15 and 36, he took the seven loaves of the, and the fish and gave thanks. We live in a country overwhelmed with food, and we ought to be thankful for it. Amen. I don't like wasting food. I'll take it home. I'll eat it whenever I can. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Of course, it don't look like it, but I do. We go to North Carolina. We got to fatten you up this week. Well, you can try. They've been doing that, trying to do that for 10 years. <laughs> but you can try. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> but Jesus took the loaves and he took those fishes and he raised them up and he gave thanks for what was provided at that time. Amen, somebody. I, was, I heard an article, I uh, read an article, heard it one time, uh, actually not too long ago, where we heard that about 40% of the food in America is wasted. I know personally of a food bank in Maine. Uh, I know some people up there. And I grew up in that general area. We was up there, and they had some food banks, and the, the stores would actually rather, the government was actually giving them a reimbursement of money for, every, for the food that they threw away, but if they gave it to a food bank, they received nothing. So it's more beneficial for them to throw it in the dumpster than it was to give it to a food bank where somebody else could benefit from it. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be thankful for, to God tonight for all the food that we have and have available to us and give thanks. And Jesus himself gave thanks for all of that and we th can thank him tonight. It says he gave it to his disciples and the disciples in turn gave it to the multitude. Amen. And this blessing, we, when we pray over our food, we are really thankful. Are we really thankful for what he has provided for us? How many has been out, out, of, out of this country, been to another country? You've been to another country, you've been to other countries, you see people don't have like we have, amen? You come back to America with a whole new appreciation for what we have in this nation, amen? Uh, I'll look at another instance in uh, Matthew chapter 26. And verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread. Of course, he's making reference to the Last Supper here. As they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my cup. And they gave thanks and gave it to them saying, Drink, or verse, excuse me, verse 27 says, And he took the cup also and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, Drink, drink. Ye all of it. Amen. So even Jesus was a man to give thanks. Hallelujah. We ought to be people of thankful hearts and be thankful every day of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you provide. You are the great provider. We thank you for our jobs. We thank you for our every provision that you make. We thank you for the table that you have set before us. Amen. How many can say you've received a miracle of food or something uh, in your life from God? When we was going to Bible college, uh, of course, you all know, if you've ever been to Bible College, you usually don't have much when you go there. <laughs> I know Ron and I didn't have a whole lot when we went there. Of course, me being a Canadian citizen, I wasn't allowed to work or anything. You know, I had, could only hold one visa at a time, either a working visa or a student visa, so I held a student visa. And so, anyway, long story short, we was uh, uh, renting this apartment, 
and uh, there was a lady underneath us, and we didn't even know who she was. We met her a few times, but she was unsaved. But she found out who we were and what we were doing. We come back one day, and there was six bags of groceries. I'm talking the paper bags, you know, not the little bags like this. With six big uh, paper bags full of groceries. And she, so we thank the Lord, praise the Lord, thank you, Lord, for all this food. Well, in there was, was uh, good food. I mean, good stuff. I mean, name brand stuff. And, so she had, and also there was two packages of double stuffed Oreo cookies. <laughs> when you're in Bible college and you can never afford cookies, that's, you'd rather have that than gold. <laughs> Double stuff for your cookies. And so the Lord had to speak to Rhonda and said, give one of those packages of cookies away. <laughs> and say, I rebuke you in Jesus. <laughs> so anyway, we took these, we took these two uh, packages, or one, we kept one for ourselves, we got, took one and we gave it to this, this uh, gentleman. He was from, uh, I think, uh, Africa, some country in Africa. We didn't know it, but all the students at the school was receiving care packages. So we took this, and we took it to him, and he was so grateful. He took this, and he was uh, one of the older students in, our, in the school, and uh, we call him Papa Adrian, and uh, he's gone on to be with the Lord, but we've called him Papa Adrian. And so he took that package of cookies, and he held them to his chest, and literally he began to cry. Tears ran down his face. And he said, you just don't know what this means to me because every other student in here is receiving care packages from home. I have no family to send me anything. He said, well, the Lord spoke to us to do this, and so we, here it is, and we gave it to you. Amen. Over that one act, two weeks later, we had some people come and visit us, and they brought groceries with them. They filled our refrigerator, they filled our pantry, and this is what they did. They said, listen, from now until school ends, we will come down and we are going to visit you every two weeks, and we're going to provide groceries for you completely, fill your refrigerator, fill your pantry every two weeks. Over two and a half out of the three years, God provided groceries for the entire time that we were there because of a simple obedience of giving God thanks for what we had and giving a part of it away. Give and it shall be given. Amen, somebody. And giving thanks. I remember another uh, story. My parents-in-law, many years ago, they were going through some rough times. And uh, they was uh, renting an apartment, too, at the time. And they were, they were there, and they was in a home, and, and uh, they didn't have any food. They didn't have, they, I think they had some kids. Rhonda, did y'all have, was y'all, there's just, just two of them out of the four at the time, and, they was there, and they all, they, they, Mary, which is Rhonda's mama, said, what are we going to do? And her father said, set the table. So they began to, she swore, well, we don't have anything. We don't have anything in the house. We, we don't have any food. What are we going to do? He just said, set the table. So he went, and he set the table, set it all out, or she did. <laughs> went and set all the table, and so he, she came to him and said, what are we going to do now? He said, let's sit down at the table. We're going to sit, tell the Lord. We're going to give God thanks for what, he's, for what he has provided. So they sat down at the table with nothing in their pantry, nothing in the refrigerator. They sat down. They just sat there with empty plates and empty glasses before them, and they just began to bow their head, and they began to pray. And when they got about halfway through the prayer, they got a knock on their door, and somebody came and provided and said, Hey, God spoke to us to give you this food and, and to provide this meal for you. And, and so they begin to give God even more thanks and praise and glory in there. Come on, somebody. We serve a mighty God tonight. We can thank Him for everything that He has done, everything that He has provided. We serve a God of miracles tonight. If we just give Him thanks, He will provide. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord even convicted me a few years ago. Because, you know, sometimes we pray for food. We just say, Lord, thank you for this food. I think, amen. And then we start shoveling it in. Because your, your stomach is growling. You're in a hurry. But the Lord convicted me after I got done praying one time. I was just kind of rambling through the prayer real quick. And I got done. And God said, was you really sincere? I said, I guess I wasn't. The Lord said, from now on, I want you to be more sincere and sincere when you pray 
over your meals. Amen. So even from that point on, when I pray, and sometimes it comes back to my remembrance, he just puts a little thought in there, sincerity. I say, Lord, I really do thank you for everything that you've done in my life. I thank you for every meal that you provided. Amen, somebody? We serve a good God tonight. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's, let's turn to the, to the book of Luke tonight. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Luke chapter 17, verse 11. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village there, he met him ten men who were lep lepers and stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priest. And so it was as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when they saw that he was healed, he returned. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned. And with a loud voice, Glorify God. Amen. Out of ten lepers, one that was healed realized that he needed to go back and give that man thanks and give that man glory for what he had done in his life. Are you thankful tonight for every miracle? Are you thankful tonight for every healing? Are you thankful for every provision? Are you thankful for every bit of the sanity of mind and wellness of body that you had tonight? Are we thankful for everything that he has done for us? Everything that he's doing in us right now and even thankful for what he is going to do. Come on, let's thank him with a loud voice. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. It says he thanked him, he glorified God. He re with a loud voice, he glorified God. Fell down at his feet saying, Gi and giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there no, not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, for your faith has made you whole. Amen, somebody. I was thinking about that phrase, give thanks. The phrase is give thanks, not take thanks. You know, sometimes we're looking for thanks. We do something and we're looking for somebody to say something back. It says here to give thanks. All through the Bible, you give thanks, give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks. Come on, somebody. Give thanks. Amen? We're going to give thanks, right? You give thanks. Well, here's the idea is thanks is an appreciation. The reason I bring this up is because we're living in a generation that believes in their rights and entitlements. I deserve it. It belongs to me. And when they receive it, and even if they receive it, there is no thanks and there is no appreciation because they feel like it's owed to me. Hallelujah. But I don't want to have that attitude. I want to be very appreciative for everything that comes my way because I understand everything that comes my way is simply by the grace and mercy of Almighty God regardless of what it is or where it comes from. If God didn't give it, I wouldn't have it. Thank you, Lord, for every breath. Thank you, God, for all my strength and all of my mind and help and everything that you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. You didn't have to, but you did.
Let's thank God for every blessing, large and small. <laughs> you know, sometimes you might not want to raise your hand on this, but sometimes people get upset at the Lord. <laughs> I, even I have once or twice. <laughs> Lord, I don't know why you didn't do this. I don't understand. But we got to turn that around and say, Lord, forgive me. You know better than I do. Your ways are higher than my ways. Your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. God, I thank you for my family. I thank you for my friends. I thank you for everything you've done in my life, whatever. And all, everything large and small, the blessing. Maybe the blessing wasn't as large as you thought it was supposed to be. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Bible says, actually, the Bible does say in the last days that people would be unthankful. Hallelujah. I don't want to be one of those kind of people. I, want to, I don't want to be the kind of person that takes anything for granted. Nothing we should take for granted here in this great country that we live in. Amen. Understanding who God is and what He has done for us. Amen. I want to, let's look at another scriptures. Another scripture. First Corinthians. Of course, I'll just I'll rattle these off. You don't have to look them all up if you don't want to. First Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. It says this. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus the Messiah. Second Corinthians two fourteen. But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph by the Messiah and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of knowing Him. 2 Corinthians 9, 11, In every way you will grow richer and become even more generous, and this will cause others to give thanks to God because of us. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 9 and 12, Since this ministry... You render is not only fully supplying the needs of the saints, it is also overflowing with more and more prayers of thanksgiving to God. In other words, when you give somebody, when you do what God has told you to do, you see, God never does something, it is never one-dimensional. It is always multi-dimensional. There's more than just what we see. When you bless somebody... It's not only you that's being blessed, that other person is being blessed, and the, the blessings and the glory goes up to God in a multiplication. Amen? That's what this is, whole verse is talking about. You give glory to God, a blessing, everybody begins to give glory to God. You give glory to God, they give glory to God, everybody's giving God glory. Hallelujah. All right, Ephesians uh, 5 and 20, this is a little different version. Anyway, it's ISV. It says, you will consistently give uh, thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus the Messiah. In what? In everything. 2 Corinthians 9, 11. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. I said we're giving God thanks here tonight. 1 Thessalonians uh, 1 and 2. We give thanks to God always for you all. Making mention of you in our prayers. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 In everything. Let me say this again. In everything. In everything. Y'all know what Isaac Peter said? Everything. It's the same thing. In everything, whatever you understand. In everything, somebody say everything. You can say everything, everything, I don't care. In everything, give thanks. Listen to this. For this is the will of God. What's God's will for my life? Give him thanks. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Amen? 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for, for strength. Thank you, Lord, for, for, for uh, a, a family. Amen? I'd like tonight to say I thank God for my wife. I thank God for the abilities and the talents that she has. And I thank God for my family. I thank God for my son, Joshua. People think he's my brother. That's all right. <laughs> Is this your brother? Yeah. <laughs> Happened not long ago. He's in a fast food restaurant. Hey, look, at that's your brother? Yeah. <laughs> not really. It's your father. My God. How old was you? Three. <laughs> that's my brother Joshua right there. No. Uh, Joshua and my, my, my daughters, you know, God has given us abilities and, and, and talents. I thank God for them. I thank God for, for, for what God has provided for me. Amen. Got a wonderful family and able to minister the gospel and be able to, to go and to sing and to minister the word in other places and, and communities and help people and help ministries. Amen, somebody. I thank God for my mom and my dad who brought me up in the fear and admonition of the Lord who dedicated me as a baby to the Lord. That was When I was old, I will not depart from the, from the work and the will of God. Amen. I thank God for Pastor Phil, and I thank God for Pastor Privet tonight. More than anybody could ever really know, I thank God. God knows how I think. God knows my heart. I thank God that God has brought me into connection and into relationship with them. I thank God as we read these scriptures. I thank God for all of you. I thank God for all of you and, and the pastors here and bringing us into remembrance. And I know uh, pa uh, Mama Privet says, you've been gone too long. <laughs> Amen. Well, sometimes we're around a little more. So we'll be here a few weeks. Maybe you can get, 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 get built up, you know, get, a, get enough of us to hold you over for a little while. But anyway, you know, we, we, we think of you all often, amen? Listen, we do. We thank you. We love you. We thank you that you've taken us in and be a part of this church. We thank you that you support us on a monthly basis in this ministry. We appreciate it so very much. We thank uh, being able to sow into pastors' lives and, and being able to minister to them and being able to have this privilege and honor to be able to minister to you tonight. I know everyone could stand up and we could take a long time. But everybody just to stand up and we could, everybody could give a testimony about what God has done and all that He is and all that He's doing in our lives. And that's what I want this to be is a night of thanks. God didn't have to. But he did. I said, God didn't have to, but he did. He didn't have to save us, but he did. He didn't have to heal your body, but he did. He didn't have to deliver you, but he did. He didn't have to loose those chains of bondage off of you, but he did. He didn't have to release the torment from off of your mind, but he did. He didn't have to release the, the stress from off of your life, but he did. He didn't have to give you peace in your mind, but he did. He didn't have to give you joy in your heart, but he does. Amen, somebody. He doesn't have to, but he did. And he's worthy of praise. He's worthy of honor tonight. He's worthy of glory. I think we all need to stand in the house of God and just give him thanks tonight. I want this to be a night of thanksgiving. I want us just to come, everyone that will and that would like to, to come to this altar tonight. Just for the rest of this evening, for the time that remains, just for you to lift your hands to God and think about methodically all the mighty blessings that God has blessed you with, small and great. And say, thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done in my life. I thank you for healing. I thank you for deliverance. If you're here tonight and you need to be saved, come on down. We'll lead you to the Lord. Is there anyone here tonight that needs to know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior? If you want special healing, then you can come as well. Just come in front of here. We'll pray with you for healing or something more specific. But everyone else that would, would you just come? You don't have to come, but if you would.
Let's just lift our hands. Rhonda's going to sing a song. And let's just begin to thank you. Just begin to lift your hands. And it's just between you and the Lord. It's like, Lord, I thank you for the things I've overlooked in my life and took for granted. The things that I thought was owed to me, that I had a right to, an entitlement to. But Lord, I thank you for every gift. I thank you for the gifts of the pastors that's in my life. I thank you for the anointing that's on my life. I thank you for the victory. I thank you, Lord. That's it. Just lift your hands and begin to worship him. Let's begin to thank him right now. Lord, thank you, Lord. Just tell him how yes, thankful I you are tonight. More, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Nothing can compare. Yes, Lord. You're our living hope, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I've tasted and seen. Yes. Of the sweetest of love. Yes. And my heart becomes free. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Who wants special prayer here? Anybody want special prayer? Just come up real close. Hallelujah. The ushers will help you out. Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill at my spirit. Yes.
your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory Hallelujah, of Jesus. your goodness. 